This is part 58 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss different techniques of passing data between components in Angular. We discussed most of these techniques in our previous videos in this series. If the components are nested, then there is a parent-child relationship between those components. To pass data from the parent component to the child component, we use input properties. We discussed input properties in detail in part 21 of Angular 2 tutorial and part 33 of Angular CRUD tutorial. To pass data from child component to parent component, we use output properties. We discussed output properties in part 22 of Angular 2 tutorial and part 37 of Angular CRUD tutorial. Another way to pass data from child component to parent component is by using template reference variables. We discussed template reference variables in part 38 of Angular CRUD tutorial. To pass data between components that does not have parent-child relationship, we can use an Angular service. We discussed using an Angular service to pass data between components in part 34 of Angular 2 tutorial. We can also use route parameters to pass data between components. Speaking of route parameters, we've got three different types. We discussed all these different types of route parameters in our previous videos. We've got required route parameters, optional route parameters, and query parameters. Now, let's use some of these techniques to pass data between components. Along the way, we'll refactor the code in the Angular application that we've been working with so far in this video series. This will give us a little more practice with component communication techniques. We are refactoring the code in our application in preparation for performing delete and update operations in our upcoming videos. At the moment, this is how our Angular application looks like. By the end of this video, we want our Angular application to look like this. Notice within every employee panel, we have got view, edit and delete buttons. We can use these buttons to view, edit and delete employee details. And if we want to create a new employee, we can use the create menu option right here. The first thing that we want to do is increase the width of this search by name text box. This text box is within our list employees component. And notice we have set the width to 300 pixels. Let's remove this style property. We also don't need this change employee name button. This button is also present within our list employees component right here. Notice the button is bound to change employee name method, which we have in our component class. Let's delete this method first and then the div element that contains the button. At the moment, when we click anywhere on any of the employee panels, the application redirects us to view that specific employee details. But this is not the behavior we want. Within the panel footer, we want to include these three buttons, view, edit, and delete. When we click the view button, that's when we want to view that employee details. If you look at this HTML, the display logic to display each employee details is encapsulated within this display employee component. Notice this component is surrounded by another development. And when we click anywhere within this development, this method is called onClick. And that method is right here, which has the code to redirect us to the employee details route. We'll delete this method in just a bit. But first, let's delete this development and its corresponding closing div. We also don't need the mouse move event here. Let's delete this and this template reference variable. Notice now when I click on these employee panels, nothing happens. Now let's include these three buttons, view, edit and delete within employee panel footer. So within display employee component view template, we have the panel heading and the panel body. So just after the panel body, let's include another development. And to make this panel footer, we use bootstrap class panel dash footer. And within this, we want a button. Let's use bootstrap button styling classes, btn and btn dash primary. And the text on this button is view. Let's also include edit and delete buttons. So the text on the edit button is edit and the text on the delete button is delete. On the delete button, instead of using btn primary class, let's use btn danger class so we get that red color. Notice now we have those three buttons. Let's make their width uniform. 
on all these three buttons we are using btn class so let's use this btn class as the selector to style all these three buttons so within the corresponding css file so all those buttons that have btn class set width to 70 pixels notice all the three buttons have the same width now at the moment when we click these buttons nothing happens when we click our view button we want to view the specific employee details so let's include the required code for that so within display employee component view template let's wire up click even handler for this view button on click we want to call view employee method we don't have this method yet we'll create that in just a bit now the code required to redirect to view employee details is already present within our list employees component so let's go to its corresponding typescript file we have the code right here so let's copy this code and then within our display employee component let's include view employee method and then paste this code in this method we have a few errors let's fix them one by one first we need the angular router service so let's inject it using the constructor let's name the private field underscore router and the type is router next we need employee id to view that specific employee details now notice the employee object is coming into this component as an input property so we can use this employee object and retrieve the corresponding employee id notice here we have query parameters we don't need this test param query parameter so let's delete that parameter and its corresponding value now whatever search term that we type in this search by name text box we want to pass it from our list employees component to display employee component and keep in mind display employee component is nested inside list employees component so display employee component is a child component and list employees component is the parent component and one technique to pass data from the parent component to child component is by using an input property so let's use an input property and pass the search term that we type in this text box from our list employees component to the child component display employee component so within our display employee component let's include an input property the name of the property is search term and this is of type string now let's bind to this input property within the parent component list employees component notice here we are already binding to the employee input property similarly let's bind to the search term input property we want to bind to the search term input property using the search term property that we have in our list employees component notice we have that property right here and within our list employees component we don't need this on click method anymore so let's delete that we also don't need this on mouse move let's save all our changes our view button should be functional now when we click the view button notice we are redirected to view that employee details when we come back to the list notice within the url we have this new param query string we don't need that anymore so let's remove its associated code let's go to our employee details component view template notice the html for the back button is right here and we are using query params directive to add that query parameter so let's remove this and at the moment we don't have any new query parameters to merge so let's set query params handling to preserve instead of merge so at this point when we navigate to the details route and come back to the list route notice within the url we don't have that query string parameter now we don't need this menu item get employee with id2 this is present within our root component app component so within our app component view template the associated menu item is right here let's delete that notice the menu item is gone now let's quickly test our application to make sure it works exactly the same way as before 
So within the search by name text box, when we type something, notice the list is filtered as expected. When we click to view that employee details, we are navigated to the details route. When we come back to the list, notice the search term is retained and the list is filtered correctly as expected. When we remove the search term, we see the full list of employees. At the moment, edit and delete buttons are not functional. We'll implement them in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.